Now this brings us to pottery. We're not going to be dealing with a lot of pottery in this class because I have to cut some things so that we can handle other issues with more detail. But here with the Minoans, we will deal with some pottery. Now in the mi middle Minoan period, we see the invention of the potter's wheel for the Minoans. The potter's wheel predates the Minoans in China and parts of Japan. We also see the desire to create a multitude of unique shaped vases. Each one will serve a purpose. These are sort of ancient Tupperware. You need pottery in your house in order to store just about anything. And we start with the Kamar Ware vase or Kamar Ware jar. This is many, one of many, piece, many similar pieces. And it's a particular type of vase where we see creamy white and reddish forms on a black background. The black background is actually the color of, is actually a slip that's painted on it. And then what they do is they add more slip to it. And slip is clay mixed with water. It is not glaze. So they're different colors of clay. Here you can see from the rim at the top that the background color is a terracotta, sort of a red color. We're seeing that in the fish. And then the black and the cream are different mixes, uh, different slips added in. The black probably incorporates ash, whereas the white incorporates something like kaolin. And we see abstract and natural forms brought together here. The natural form, obviously, we have our fish, which is going to be a very natural form. But unless the fish tends to be vomiting its guts, what we're seeing is an abstract form here, giving us a sense that the fish might be talking. We also see these spirals, and these spirals are there to give us a sense of water, of flowing movement. And the idea here is to move the eye around the object, to get you to turn the object and look at other sides. The decorations usually indicate what's in it. And one of the most popular condiments at the time is going to be a fish sauce, where you ferment fish and you basically squeeze out all the juices that come out of the fermenting fish and you spread it on things. It's also a way of using salt, of incorporating salt, because you use salt in fermenting the fish. And before you think, oh, that's horrible, we would never, ever do that, let me remind you that Worcestershire sauce is made from, in large part, fermented fish. So just saying. Usually this decoration will indicate something about what's in it. Sometimes it doesn't. And remember we're on an island. So they're very close to the sea and it's possible that they're simply using fish because it's something very common that's around them all the time. The finest pieces of vaseware are found in the palaces at Nyosos and a few other sites on the Isle of Crete. Now, as we move on in time, we move to the late Minoan style and we see the octopus jar. And no, this doesn't necessarily mean that they kept octopuses in really funky looking jars. So the octopus jar is again incorporating a marine image, and it's quite possible that they're simply using the octopus because with its eight legs and, uh, or eight tentacles, you can use it over the entire surface of the vase. The background is creamy white, and then we see that dark slip painting applied over the surface. And the head is painted on the widest surface because the head is the single largest element. So they're putting it on the widest part of the vase. And it creates an image that is balanced, but not symmetrical. You can't just cut this in half and get a nice symmetrical image. Instead, imagine that we have a balance and you're taking different elements that you see and you're applying it to each side of that balance, the left side and the right side. And you'll see that it would level out. It's sort of a thought experiment. Now, what might this have held? It could have been anything from wine to water to oil. 
it could have been an octopus, I suppose, but we don't generally can those and keep them around the house. But who knows? 